There's nothing left to say Where the promise of a breakthrough Is just a breath away And we lean into your presence As your glory fills this place And where the power of your spirit
and join us. There's a sound, sound breaking on, Lord, for all that you've done. Here we are. 
here with you. Here with you I want the people to declare. Love. Come on now. As we declare your this love. should be the best time. This be the best time. Oh, Maria, let's sing it. Come on. Here with you. Here with you. We'll sing it all my time and say. I'm telling you, we are living in the best days of our lives. Hallelujah. Because it's the one, is that the year of the wonders of the Spirit of the Lord. And everything is standing around for my good. I don't know how about you, but everything is standing around for our good. Hey, somebody you can just stand around where you are like this. Fall and fall out. What? Take it again, come on now. You can turn around. Enjoy the morning, come on now. Take it again, let the people enjoy themselves in the presence of the Lord.
you do prosperous in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that it is not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's how we are taking nations. Hallelujah. That's how we are taking nations. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We give you all the glory this morning. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness. Oh, Father, we exalt your name. Indeed, you are good, and your mercies endure forever. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for protection, for the provision. Oh, we give you the glory, Jesus. There is none like you. There is none like you. This morning, we want to give you all the praises, Father. We exalt your name, King Jesus. Oh, just lift up your voice and give him all the glory. Just love him, just love him, just love him. He is highly exalted. He is highly exalted. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. There is none like you, Jesus. Great, yes, you are all you are. You walked upon the sea, you raised the dead, you reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything written about you. You are great, yes, you are holy one. You walked upon the seas, you raised the dead. Oh, you reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything. Oh, 
hands tremble at your praises. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Everything written about you is great. Oh, we extol you, Father. Indeed, you are great. In all the earth, there is none like you. There is none like you. From our hearts, Lord, we bless you this morning. Indeed, you are great. The works that you are doing amongst us. Oh, Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you for the miracles that you do. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Hallelujah, Satala Bayakaya. Hele Kare Sate Maleko, Satala Baya. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Holy Motokovo, yes, Ah 
righteous, the righteous run into it. And Lord, they are safe. Thy name of Lord is the name that saves of God. In you, Lord, we live. In you, Lord, we have our being. Lord, we give you praise. Wonderful ministry. 
Thank you very much. The gentlemen on the instruments, you are the best. Oh, praise the Lord once again. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, my name is Wolgenbe Atha, and on behalf of my man of God, Pastor Dunstan Kagwisa, I would love to once again welcome each and every one of you to today's service. Hallelujah. We completely know that church wouldn't be the same without you being with us here. So we love you when you come in here. We love you being with you, fellowshipping with you. Hallelujah. We know that probably you would have decided to stay somewhere and probably watch online. But you decided to come and fellowship with us. It's a great pleasure. And those of you that are watching us online, we truly and dearly do love you. And we believe that if you get a chance of being in Uganda, being in Kampala, we so much would appreciate you too being with us for these wonderful and awesome and mighty services. Hallelujah. Child of God, quickly allow me to take you through uh, our weekly program. Weekly, uh, quickly take you through our weekly program. Uh, reminding each one of you that this is the year of the wonders of the Spirit. <laughs> the wonders of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Pastor told us, uh, you know, some time back that it's going to be a year of speed. Hallelujah. It's going to be a year of speed. It doesn't matter how you look at yourself. It doesn't matter what is prevailing in your life. You could be seeing as though things are not going on well. The Bible says that, hey, Saul, you are not small. That is what, uh, you know, Prophet Samuel tells him. He tells him that, you know what, Saul, you are not small. For he thought that he was coming from a very small tribe of the Benjamites and also of a small clan. But he told him that the Spirit of God is going to come upon you. And you shall be turned into another man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For when the spirit of God had come upon Elijah, the Bible says that Elijah then was able to, to, to put on the clock, into, to turn the clock into his belt. And the Bible says that he ran past Ahab unto Jezreel. Listen, child of God, the spirit of the Lord this year 2023 has spoken by man by my man of God, that even as the wind blows, and you know not where it cometh and where, uh, <laughs> where it goes, so shall you be in this year. child of God, I want you to know. I want you to know. For the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that, it tells us that what eye has not seen, what ear has not yet heard of, what has not yet entered into the heart of a man, are the things which the Spirit of God has prepared for them that do love the Lord. You may not have prayed for it, but as long as my man of God is the year of wonders of the Spirit, Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's lifting us as world restoration. We're not going to remain the same. We thank God for the 22,000 souls of last year. We don't take it light in this ministry. But we completely know this year. Hey, great numbers of souls are turning to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you because you have loved us so greatly. And you've given us the best. You've given us a gap. You've given us a shepherd after your own heart. We thank you, Lord, for you are lifting up this ministry so greatly, oh God. Thank you for the lifting. Thank you, Lord, for we are mounting up as you know, with wings as eagles. And upon your wings, oh God, are you taking us, oh Father? In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said. Please be reminded that each and every Monday we have the revival prayer meetings. Every Monday we do have the, the revival prayer meetings at the old cathedral. You are welcome. Come join us together with Pastor Dunstan Kagwisa. As it takes us into the word, as it prepares us, as we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Wednesdays we do have the awesome, the great. I said every Wednesday.
Wednesday, every, every Wednesday, we have the agape meetings. Hallelujah. Yeah, so, some people around here have caught it, but the people around here did not get it. I said each and every Wednesday, we have the agape meetings. Hallelujah. Now help me come and get to your neighbor. Tell them that the agape meetings, talk to them. The agape meetings are held in the house of, in the former Fido Dido, the house of rest. Tell them, come join us. Talk to them. Tell them, come join us. Every Wednesday, starting 6 p.m. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. And Thursdays, we have the online midweek, midweek love fest. On each and every Thursday, we have the online midweek love fest. Now, these ones are so nice. You could be in your washroom, and then, you know, you're, you're, getting the, you know, you're getting the service there and then. So, it's so simple. You could be in the marketplace. Even though I would recommend you get in a quiet place, in a good place where the Lord is going to speak to your heart. Hallelujah. So, it's so simple. All you got to do is simply type in, go to YouTube, type Pastor Dunstan Kagwisa. Hallelujah, church. We said every Every Thursday, every, every Thursday, the love week, the, the midweek love feast. Hallelujah. Starting at exactly 7 p.m. Each and every Sunday, we do have one love service that starts at exactly 9 a.m. You are all welcome. Those of you that are here and those of you that are watching us online, you are all dearly welcome. We only have one service starting at exactly 9 a.m. So we encourage you, invite friends and family. As a people that the Lord has blessed I've always mentioned it, that you cannot come into this ministry. You cannot come into this ministry and your life remains the same. Hallelujah. I wish I had a record. I wish I had a record of the pictures when I joined this ministry. You, hallelujah, hallelujah. I tell you, God has done a glorious thing in my life. He has done a glorious thing in my life. And he's not only doing it for me, but he's also doing it for you in Jesus' mighty name. He's a God who desires to bless us. Hallelujah. He's a God who is so proud when we are living a blessed life. For each and every parent would desire to say, oh, look at my son who is highly blessed. So is the Lord. And so because the Lord has blessed us, therefore we give in this ministry. For we want the work of God to continue. We want God's work to continue being done. Hallelujah, church. And because you are givers, therefore allow me to read for you the giving lines. The Airtel is a 0752. 0752. 55, 25, 65. The MTN line is a 0781, 42, 41. I beg your pardon, 0781, 42, 16, 52. You could as well give us a check. You can as well give us a check. Or you can as well do an EFT. You can as well uh, transfer that money. Uh, you know, in Centenary Bank, the names are World Restoration Center Church. And the account number is 31 000 Bible says it is more blessed to give. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Hallelujah, church. If you want to brag on Jesus, if you feel like you want, you would love to brag on Jesus for what Jesus has done in your life, it is just so simple. You can as well send us a text message. Uh, the airtel line is simply uh, 0751 32 33 19. The MTN line is a 0770 49 44 10. You could as well email unto us. Send us that email. Tell us what God is doing in your life. Let others know of the goodness of God, of what God is doing in lifting you up. We will celebrate with you. Hallelujah. And as we celebrate, you never know. You're speaking into someone's life and God is also lifting him as well. So, testimonies at worldrestorationministries.org But just in case you are like, I want to testify before church. I want to give my testimony here in church. So it's so simple as well. You could simply register with Mrs. Gloria Semogeri. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, due to the long queues that usually my man of God has, so he decided to put up what we call the ministers of the word so that you don't spend many hours, you know, waiting for him. Okay, to be prayed for. So he has put up ministers of the word in this ministry. And these ministers are always arranged at the back, at the back, uh, you know, of, of this hall, each after each and every service. So if you feel like you'd like to be prayed for, just move at the back there. You're going to be, you're going to see wonderful seats that are already arranged. The ministers are going to be there. Go, they pray for you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 
if you belong or if you'd like to belong to to any of the following departments the ladies department you 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 are a man and you want to to be part of the men in this ministry you you would like to be part of those that are married it is so simple you are a youth you want to belong to that group of the youth hallelujah so all that you need to do is just to register just outside there and inform them i want to join the love catalyst i want to join the marriage department i want to join then they are going to register your name they're gonna take your contact and then you will be part of us hallelujah partners agape partners meeting hallelujah i tell you those who celebrate they know what it means uh, when it comes to partnership because now they have a relationship with god so they know that when it comes into a partnership meeting my man of god is gonna speak into my finances concerning this very year why because i tell you I tell you, even as Apostle Paul says, even as Apostle Paul says that, you know, he, he, he always prays so hard and so much for the people, uh, you know, so that God blesses them. Why? Because they have been with him in partnership of the gospel. So is my man of God. He desires to see that the partners in this ministry are highly and highly lifted up. That if today you are able to partner with a million, tomorrow you're going to partner with a billion. I tell you, hallelujah. And it's only God who is lifting you. It's only God who is blessing you. So partners meeting this very month, the 28th of January at exactly 5 p.m. Listen, child of God, it's going to be so simple. It's going to be an online an online meeting. So all that you will have to do is probably to type in Pastor Danson Kagwisa. But listen, listen, church. They will give you the link. The link will be shared. The day is 28th of January. I encourage each and every one of you to become a partner in this great and glorious ministry. Praise the Lord, church. And we do have a partnership desk that is already arranged, uh, probably outside here, I guess so. So you could meet the people that are outside there. Talk to them. Tell them, I want to become a partner. Don't be scared. Don't be worried. Don't, don't think that to partner with, with the gospel, you have to have, you know, uh, lots of uh, millions of dollars. No, no, no. Whatever amount that you have can actually start. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. We do have a children's prayer altar that is already arranged and it's coming up this 27th of January. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, just for those of you that did not get it, we have the children's prayer altar. The 27th of January. Praise the Lord Church. And it's going to be online and it will start at exactly 10.30 a.m. It will be good for you to sit with your children or to sit with your neighbor's children and so that the word of God is released unto them that the pastor prays for them even before they go back into their schools. Hallelujah. So it's 27th, the 27th of January. Time, 10.30 a.m. And finally, in case you are a lady in the age bracket of 12 and 18. Now, the ladies department has arranged, it has actually come up with, uh, you know, with a fellowship just purposely for you. Hallelujah. So it's just for ladies between 12 years as well as, uh, you know, between 12 and 18. So all you need to do is just to register outside there. I uh, probably believe it is Minister Trishila. Thank you very much. Minister Trishila is taking those names. So then we are going to contact you and we're going to inform you much more regarding this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Can we once again welcome the mighty, the great, the best choir in the world to come and minister to you as they release the anointing, the power, Hallelujah. Good morning once again, church. You are so much welcome. We're happy to have you this morning. The song we are going to sing says, Believe for it. The song says, believe for it. Hallelujah. So if you, the one you love, you don't struggle to believe anything they tell you. You just believe even if it is a lie. <laughs> but we have our Jesus, he does not lie. Our God does not lie. The Holy Spirit can, can never lie. Hallelujah.
So everything he says, we believe. And this is the year of the wonders of the Spirit of the Lord. So we believe for those wonders to happen in our lives. Hallelujah. Yeah, we're just going to go straight away.
that whatever he says in our lives is yes and amen. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. We believe everything you say, we believe. Our job is to believe everything that you say. Oh, we believe. Yes, Lord, we can breathe.
Father, we thank you. And when we think about it all, <laughs> bottom line is we are even here in this service because we believe for it. Did you know you're here because you're believing for it? Or you, you just haven't done the spiritual math? God, we believe for it. Every time you come for church service or a gathering or a prayer meeting, it's because you believe something. You're crazy enough to believe for something. Okay, even if you don't believe God for a car, a house, a marriage, somehow you're believing God for heaven. Did you understand what I mean? Anytime you show up for church, you are saying, I believe, one, there is a God. I believe there is a heaven. I believe there is something good, good somewhere along this creature. Because if you didn't believe at all, you wouldn't be here. You would just say, what's, what's the point? Just forget it. So even those of you that think you're non-believers, help me tell the neighbor, did you know you're a believer? That you are here is proof of it. That's why one of my fights now I discovered is against this faith doctrine. Not the substance of faith, it's the faith doctrine. Because some people just want to make us feel like we don't believe at all. Do you understand? That a woman carries a child to a preacher and says, pray for my child. And then that preacher has the audacity to tell the woman, your faith is small. As a preacher, we're not your Because you didn't tell her to come. She came. Right? She came. That is faith for God to work with. He said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, I'll work with it. Hello, people. Welcome to the love revelation. Don't sit yet. He said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, the size of a mustard seed, this is the size, that means seed, it, it's there. It's there. I'll work with it. So that's why I, through the scriptures, I see those that were, the Lord said, oh, great is your faith. Like the, the man who said, send the word. He said, great is your faith. But then there's another one who came and said, come that you may heal my child. And Jesus says, I'll come. So to the one who says, send the word, he sends the word. To the one who says, come, he says, I'll come. To the one who says, touch me, Jesus touched. He made everybody where they were. As long as they acknowledged him. Praise God. So I don't know what you're believing God for. But from the impossible, what does the line say? We'll see a miracle. We'll see a miracle. Me, I say we receive a miracle. Amen. We receive a miracle. I don't even like putting it in the... We'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... That, yeah, yeah, and it's beautiful. It's like, but I would rather... I, I say we receive a miracle. Because we believe. You came to the revelation of God that even gives you what you've not believed for. That's what you did hello that's what you did so if you're here in church and you are that's why i'm talking to you something good is cooking for you yeah. me i told you if i didn't believe god for great things i would have given up on ministry a long time ago i would be selling charcoal or coca-cola or something or my talking but i'm here preaching why are you saying no? Isn't it food? But I'm here what? Preaching. Nothing else. And if this is what I live to do, do I look like a madman to you? Does Pastor Dika look crazy? So if I am not crazy and this is what I do for life, it must be very important. Yes. Very, very important. Madmen don't preach the gospel. Madmen don't give up professions to preach this thing. But we've seen this thing change lives. And your life is one of them. So let's welcome Jesus to this service this morning. Welcome, welcome, Lord Jesus. Welcome. Welcome. We love you, Lord. And then turn around and welcome your neighbor. 
Are these steps aligned today with the podium? How is the choir going to get off? Today we have a misalignment. Who put this up here today? Was it? What, what is out of line? The podium or the steps? The steps are out of line. So my, my girl children are supposed to fly off the pulpit like that. Thank you. Did you welcome your neighbor? Really, really, really? Sure, sure, sure. Well, my neighbors here didn't welcome me. Welcome, choir. You look like a Christmas tree online, especially online. Your colors look good. How did we forget red? Take it. No, 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 no. Stay with me. Are the babies going to children's church? Are they? Can we welcome our online people? Online, online, online. God bless you for bearing with our volume fluctuations today online. Those are family issues. That's how we know your family. When you bear with certain things and send us feedback. More volume. God bless you. So, are the babies going for children's church? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where are the babies? So last night I sat up watching our worship of last Sunday. Before last Sunday's sermon. Yet I discovered there's a secret in going back and watching the service you were a part of. You usually enjoy and see things that you missed when you were there. Do any of you ever go back and watch the service? Did anybody enjoy the worship as much as I did? You lied. You didn't watch it again. I rewatched it and I was so blessed. Hey, look who is here. Judah boy, how are you? You're good? Where's mommy? Go tell mommy to come say hello to me. Hello. 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 Some of you now are jealous of me. I get hugs you never get. Who is mommy? Go bring me mommy. Tell mommy, pastor wants to see you. I've not seen her since last year. Uh huh. <laughs> and who is this quiet one here? Huh? Judah. Where's mommy hiding? Mama hiding somewhere. Come here, little baby. Come and stand right here. Oh, I love children. Yeah, as you look at them, these are somebody's wives, somebody's husband. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Huh? Every time my children are here, I have to get you thinking deeply about them. Because some of you, all you see is children. Me, yes, I see children, but I'm an investor. I am what? I'm an investor. I see children. I see somebody's wife. I see somebody's husband. And I see preachers of tomorrow. Somebody's wife. Hello, somebody's wife. Mrs. Insubuga Fields, I've made you travel to 23 years from now. How old is she now? She's making three when? So I've made you travel to 23 years from now. She's getting married at 25. Somebody's wife. Hello. And chances are very high that her husband is already here somewhere. Somewhere on earth, somewhere. No, not, not necessarily here, but somewhere. Somewhere on earth. Chances are very high. Two years, yeah. Ch so chances are very high. Her husband is already born. Huh? So, and you, let me put you on notice. 
you tell him I am not taking kanzus. No kanzu. All right, Lala? I don't take what? Come here. He will tell your husband, Pastor Dickie doesn't want kanzus. He doesn't know what to do with them. And that goes for all of you. Oprah, Brenda, no kanzus. Barbara, no kanzus. I have enough kanzus. I don't know what to do with them. So, you know what to do. The Holy Spirit will tell you. So, Lala, no kanzus. All right? You thought you have only one father. No, you have two. <laughs> In fact, you have three. The one up there, the one here, and this one. Praise God. So, for those of you who don't know, this is Pastor Titus' baby girl. The first baby girl. Number two. Number two baby. Number two. Baby girl number two on the way. Because we have two boys, a girl, and another one coming. Yeah. So, thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so, parents, you know what to do. I love taking, you know, some of you probably wonder, why does it just so linger around children? Because one time you were a child. And we dismiss children. Oh, we went to church. We went to a crusade and there were children just... I said, look at you. The mango tree that you're eating from today was one time like this. Search out your hands. Let's bless the babies. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Come on. Prophesy. Bless our children. Bless these men and women. Do you see the men and women in them? I said, do you see the men and women in them? men and women thank you Holy Spirit for the children thank you God thank you Lord Jesus thank you Holy Spirit prophesy yours is to speak mine is to lay hands every parent every parent uh -huh. at least today Oprah is speaking Yeah, all of you single girls speak. In fact, you should speak louder. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord God. Every word, every word, every word, every word. Bridget, you're not speaking. Bless the children. Bless the children. As you do your work, bless the children. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Pielele kaparende. Kathe sukulida. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't hear you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, they are blessed. We bless them and they are blessed. Oh God, we bless our children with the dew of heaven. We bless them with the fatness of the earth. Lord, we sustain them with corn and wine and oil. Abundance of it. Nations will serve them. Strangers will serve them. We make them lords upon the earth. Nothing will rebel against them, but all shall respond to them. The good of the earth shall respond to them. And they shall eat of the fatness of this earth. And ride on the high places of the earth. They shall eat of the blessing of our father Jacob. In the name of Jesus Christ. No weapon fashion against these children will prosper. Not a single weapon. Not a single weapon. From the small to the great. Not a single weapon. No sickness, no disease, no witchcraft, no attack of the enemy, no weapon, no economic weapons, no social weapons, no weapons of family curses, no weapons shall prosper against these children. The seed of greatness is in them. And Lord, we bless the children that are online in the name of the Lord Jesus. With the same blessing spoken here, the children that are online. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
let's give let's ask them let's let's help them give to the lord children where is your money for jesus and the children online should give their offerings put the giving information for the online parents put giving information for online parents always put it there when the children are coming to give because online parents miss a lot so the children wait uh, who doesn't have money okay parents give me one two three monies who else doesn't have i think this little one also doesn't have four monies parents wait 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 they could really some of us are still collecting parents give me money 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 thank you thank you uh -huh. who else who else put up uh -huh. who else little baby i want one more money Choo -choo 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 monies. there's not a single child in this house that should not give not one yes we are training them to be givers father we bless their finances even those that are giving online parents you can do it for your children they may not know how to do mobile money and whatever you can even give for your teenage children because they are your children anyway even 20 year olds on campus that are giving you a headache you know so father will bless their finances in the name of jesus they will always be giving 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 for the rest of eternity because you are their daddy so you go ahead and take and your babies are giving they'll be giving and giving and giving for the rest of eternity my daddy my daddy your baby is singing what's your name what's your name hmm? what's your name hmm? oh who knows this 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 pretty one's name is she your sister ah, what's her name Bethany you came with daddy and mommy mommy where is mommy Bethany because I think I I'm just getting to know Bethany oh really how come more money for how many two two money's parents where have you been hiding Bethany how come I hadn't met her before I forgive you parents two more monies they are two babies that have no offering where are they they got already no 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 you can give more who else my Jesus my Jesus your baby is singing Judah where is mommy where where there I can't see in the back hiding in the back okay you give mommy go go give mommy a big hug for me run tell her that's from pastor give mommy a big hug that's how you run <laughs> praise god almighty Mr. Kasuja Jr. Chief Protocol. There. He really took his sweet time. Tebamu Papia. Kalo Boga Nyokuduke Misinde Njajibu Sachitao. Praise God. All right. Oh, our children are blessed in the name of Jesus, aren't they? Their finances are blessed. And we bless the children's teachers in the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessing be upon them and their families and their own children in jesus name and everybody says amen all right babies you can go enjoy your church i'll see you at the end of the service let's give them a big god bless you let's clap for them as they go
Holy Spirit. My online people, you're welcome. Just quick hellos to Jessica Tenlo Trust. Wherever you are, coming from Emmanuel Ochola. I keep forgetting where this son of mine is. Qatar, Kuwait, uh, Hood East Line. Good to see you again. And uh, all of you dear ones, especially the names of Samira Hussein. God love you. Biarahanga Paul is probably watching from Kabale. Nora Nachimuli, is that from Taki? All the way from Taki? Is that Taki? Yeah, all the way. So, I am a good shepherd. I'm getting to know my people. Jen Tumusime and Salongo Nathan, all the way from Katerera. The man who believes that I'm happier in Kampala than in Katerera. We love you. All of you that are online, we love you. Welcome to the service today. You have opened my eyes. You have opened my eyes. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You have opened my eyes. You have opened my eyes. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You have opened. You have opened. Holy. I don't hear you. Oh, you guide me. Yes, 
Abba, Abba. You are our Father. Let it fall on me. Cry for the rain and sing. Ask the Holy Ghost. We're in your presence. Let it rain. Oh, Let it rain. We're in your presence. Holy Spirit.
the rain of signs and wonders, the rain of miracles this year, this year, Father. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain. Ask for the rain. Ask for the rain. The latter rain and the former rain. Ask for the rain. The rain of the Holy Ghost. Ask for the rain. Online, ask for the rain of heaven. There's such a thing as the rain of heaven. There's such a thing as the rain of heaven. The Bible talks about the dew of heaven. Talks about the rain of heaven. Ba, 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 ba. Father, Father, Father. These are the beginnings of the year. Speak, speak, speak. Ask for the rain. This is the beginning of your year. Speak, speak, speak. Ask for the rain of heaven. The dew of heaven. Showers of the Holy Spirit. Showers, showers, showers. Showers, showers, showers. Oh, yo. Let it rain on me, Lord. Let it rain on me, Lord. Let it rain on me, Lord. Let it rain. Let it rain on me, Lord. Oh, we say, Ba 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 ba. You are my ba ba. You are ba.
thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the word this morning. Our hearts are open, fertile ground to bring forth hundredfold the harvest of the word sown in us. We open our spiritual wombs to receive divine sperma in our spirits. None of us will miscarry. None of us will abort. None of us will miss. We thank you for the spirit of understanding. Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. We are not of that ground from which the birds and the fowl of the air come and steal the seed. No. We are not of that ground that is riddled with thorns and thistles that chokes the seed. No. We are not rocky ground that has shallow earth that the sun comes and scorches the seed. No. But we are that fertile ground. The word spoken to our hearts brings forth fruit. Yes, 36 to 100 fold and we claim a hundred fold, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody say amen for yourself. One more time say amen for yourself. The third time say amen for yourself. Amen. So may the word of God have free course in your life. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, choir. Take your seats. And our precious people online, we love you. God bless you. And this morning, I want to speak to you about because last Sunday I introduced, I began, we began to plow your hearts about the word of the year. And there's something I wasn't able to get into and I want to get into it today. By the way, we want to remind you that our cell ministry is opening, launching soon. What's the date of our launching, Pastor T? February 22nd. Feb 22nd. The Love Cell Ministry is launching. And at the end of today's service, I will introduce some people to you that are playing major parts in the launch of this ministry. And I'll be bringing you a message or two to prepare you for the cell ministry. But today, I want to bring you one of the things the Lord spoke to me that you're going to find wonderful happening to you this year. One of the seven wonders of the spirit that you'll experience. And these that I'm going to be unveiling to you, we do not limit God. Many of them come in concentrated form. Manduli. But you may multiply and they become a hundred wonders to you. But all of them will fall under these seven, I believe. So what I wanted to touch last Sunday that I wasn't able to because we had to expound on John 3, the wind man. The new man. New ma. Praise God. We said when when the anemos, the wind, blows the pneuma kicks in to control it praise god beautiful message if you missed it you want to go back and watch it i can guarantee you that you'll be blessed if you missed last sunday's message you need it you don't just want you need it and this morning number wonder one number wonder one wonder number one <laughs> number wonder one wonder number one recovery one of the things that is going to happen to you you'll begin to recover all that you lost in previous years and more 
you shall recover all and more. All the recovery may not happen this year, but it will begin to happen this year. It will begin to happen this year. And this is a very clear word that the Lord put in my spirit. That there is so much, there has been a lot of loss in the lives of many children of God. A lot of loss in many aspects of your lives. Loss of opportunities. Loss of finances. Loss of relationships. Loss of your health, divine health. And the losses, we can go on and on and on. You know what form they could have taken in your life. And this year the Lord wants to begin to address the issue of loss. Opportunities that we are robbed of. Things that happen to you. And I want you to clearly understand that this recovery is not dependent on you having done everything right. Neither is it contingent on that the loss was not your fault. The loss could actually have been your fault. It could have been an unwise decision you made. It could have been a way you mishandled a relationship. It could have been a wrong relationship you were in. It could have been anything that came from you that has occasioned that loss. But our God is a God of love and grace and mercy. The Bible says he will not always chide. He will not always be angry at you. He does not reward us according to our iniquities. Projector, you're stuck in 2023. And you usually write our titles for us. But the Lord does not deal with us according to our mistakes. That Psalm 103 says, he has not dealt with us after our iniquity. He's not rewarded us according to our sins. So it does not matter the reason for the loss. Some people are stuck in the world of loss because they made mistakes. Who doesn't make mistakes? Show me one man who makes no mistakes. Show me one woman who makes no mistakes. Show me somebody who does not sin. Some people thought when we are born again, we do not sin. No, you sin. Your soul and your body sin. Your spirit doesn't. But your soul and your body sin. And, and the scripture says, the Lord says, He's not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. But sometimes, certain natural systems that are into play can work against us depending on how we've behaved or how we've handled certain things and done certain things and, and some things just kick in all right they, they are natural consequences of certain things but that does not mean that the lord has abandoned you to be held back and curtailed and and and, and stuck Especially if your heart is open toward him. Because this is very different from rebellion. Rebellion is a, a, a totally different thing. When God talks about rebellion and stubbornness, he likens them to, to iniquity and witchcraft. Very serious things. And, and, and sometimes, can I help you here, beloved people? Sometimes when we are talking mercy and grace and, and, and love, some people, and, and we say, there is no body God cannot help. There is nothing you cannot recover from. So, some people totally misunderstand and they don't tell the difference between I have sinned, I am sorry, and I have sinned and I don't care. Leave me alone. 
there is a huge difference. There is a huge difference. And that difference is the difference between the saint and the devil. I have sinned. I am sorry. Abba, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done it that way. I shouldn't have spoken that way. I shouldn't have treated so and so that way. And I have sinned. Hey, who doesn't sin? Leave me alone. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, so now, there is stubbornness and rebellion. God hates it. God hates it. But there is brokenness and contrition. Now, he says, a broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. And that's a man and woman on the way to recovery. On the other hand, a stubborn and rebellious heart, that one God has to deal with until he breaks it. And for such, for God to promote and lift you in rebellion and stubbornness is actually to destroy you. Can I say that again? For God to bless and lift and promote somebody who is in rebellion and stubbornness, that's actually to destroy them. It's to do them a disservice. You know, you know why? Because they will say, oh, so everything is okay. In fact, I think I prosper better when I'm in this state. When I mistreat people, when I'm stubborn, when I'm rebellious to authority, when I'm, I think I prosper better. And so they will continue on that path. When a child of God's heart is in rebellion and stubbornness, there God himself will resist you. He resists you because he says he resists the proud. Do you understand? But God will help anybody. It doesn't matter where a child has been. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. What you did. If your heart is toward God and reaching for God, he will help you. Are you hearing me? He will help you. There is nobody who cannot recover. God spoke to me very clearly, as clear as I know my name. He said, I will begin to help my children recover everything they've lost. And he said, and he said, and more. Not just what they lost, and more. There will be a compensation for the lost time. When God says, I restore to you the years the locust has eaten. The canker worm. So as, as we receive the wonders of the spirit, one thing you should avoid, just don't have a rebellious and stubborn heart. Because there God himself fights you. He says it's like iniquity, it's like witchcraft. That's what he said when he spoke to, to King Saul. He says rebellion, stubbornness, it's as iniquity. It's, it's, it's so serious. One time I was speaking to uh, Triple Tutti, that group that I meet every end of month. God gave me a sermon title and I spoke about the sting of rebellion. Now I knew my spirit was already boiling concerning that thing. But God was even boiling hotter than me. When I shared that message, the whole place exploded and I saw God's wrath against rebellion and stubbornness. Jesus Christ. I saw, I felt, I, it, it was, it was, and God spoke to some several people in that meeting. Now, for, the, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So what is rebellion? Meanwhile, why am I talking about this? Because I'm positioning you for recovery. Because I don't want anybody who, for instance, lost something. And God is bringing you correction in that area to bring healing. And you resist that correction. Because if you resist that correction, you enter into that realm. There will be no recovery. So let's deal with this ground. He says, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Look at how God looks at rebellion. That rebellion against correction, against authority, leadership. When, when correction is coming your way, instruction, and you rebel, you say, me, I want to go that way. He says, it's like witchcraft. So some people have had dreams about themselves or about other people. And these people were in, in shrines practicing witchcraft. But the person you dreamt about has actually never stepped into a shrine. In fact, to your knowledge of that person, you are like, this dream is of the devil. No. This one is a worship leader. Cannot be. <laughs> this is of the devil. Get thee behind me, devil. Because we've not learned dream what? Interpretation according to scripture. But now, as a pastor, 
When a child comes and says, I had a dream about so and so, and they were in a shrine. Now me, I know. The child you're telling me about. That, from what I know of them, they can't be physically in a shrine. But I can tell, I can know, this is God is speaking something deeper. And so, when God is speaking in dreams, he comes in mystery. So, rebellion is as what? Witchcraft. So, you end up seeing yourself, Musabo, Nozuku Kanomenya. Me, never. No, no, no. God is trying to tell you, you're walking in what? Rebellion. You have to look at, where am I being rebellious? Did I just shout at a leader the other day? Am I just resisting an instruction? But rebellion. Sometimes it's a good friend and you may have a dream about them. In a shrine or doing African juju. And you're like, ah! That this person is a close friend of mine. It can't be God. It can't be. No. There's something about their heart you don't know. They have a rebellious heart. God says rebellion is as what? Witchcraft. Others have had dreams of people. I remember somebody came to me and said, I saw a woman. And she spoke to me about that years ago. In fact, at the church I pastored before. We keep receiving these dreams. And sometimes you can tell a dream is demonic. Other times you can see a very serious message. So somebody had a dream about somebody. And said, I saw this woman was killing people. She had a machete, a panga. She was beheading, killing, killing, killing. I mean, there was so much blood, she was killing people. And I said, wow. Now, that dream, you can really tell this woman will never kill people like that. I mean, even if she was in the army, which she's not likely, you don't see that. But there's one thing I knew about that dear woman. She was very hateful. Very hateful you can feel their bitterness angry and hateful and when she hated somebody what you say about that person she will not see any good in that person pure perfect hatred and what does the bible say about the haters haters are what murderers now in the dream this is what god shows killing people and you're like but i'll never that's of the devil get off and of you no be careful what you're dismissing just look at your heart. So dream interpretation, according to the scripture. Understanding spiritual things. Now, the reason I begin this sort of wake up thing as we talk recovery, because recovery is for whosoever will. It's like when you're sick and you take yourself to the hospital. I want to recover. Alright? Have a wound here. It needs treatment. Only one thing will stop recovery. Rebellion and stubbornness. That you sinned does not stop your recovery. That you made a mistake will not stop your recovery. That you made a stupid decision will not stop your recovery. Because all those things, everybody, all of us have done. Made a stupid decision, made a mistake, sinned here and there, blundered here and there. Everybody has. That does not stop anybody from recovering all. There's only one thing, rebellion and stubbornness. He says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. So children of God, hear me. This is for your comfort. Don't look on the situation you're in today and say, ah, for me, I'm the one who made this mistake. I'm the one who did this. I made a bad decision. I lost money in business. I traded where I shouldn't have traded. I related with who I shouldn't have related with. And this occasioned this, and it, this brought this. And this, listen, peace. Child of God, peace. What? Peace. You shall recover all. You shall recover time. You shall recover finances. You shall recover your youth. You shall recover your strength. You shall recover the anointing. You shall recover all. And he said it's going to be a wonder because many of you have given up on things which God has not given up on. For you, it was lost and gone. And God says, no. It's not over until I say it's over. For you, it is stolen and gone. That money is gone. He says, that's what you think. He says, that's what you think. My youth is gone. He says, that's what you think. That's what you think. Our father Abraham was... 90 whatever plus years old and they had just given up on having children yet god had a recovery plan for him and when god visited the man recovered his youth his strength are you hearing me there is nothing you've lost 
or that you, whether it's your health because if you can hear me that means you're still you're not dead but if there's anything in your health anything in your finances your business your whatever some people have given to the lord and sown precious seeds and given to the gospel and they feel like they lost in fact there we don't even talk recovery we are talking reward because when you gave to god you didn't lose however i'm saying it for your benefit who think you lost you shall recover I just want to take a moment to rub this in because this is the word of the Lord. There shall be recovery beginning this year. You'll see things come back to you that you thought. You'll see relationships come back to you that you thought are dead and buried. He says, I'll restore to you. Let me read you something in 2 Kings. Chapter 6. Somebody say wonders. Wonder number one. So some of you now will have code language. You may enter into prayer and say, Abba, Abba, wonder number one. And he will know what you're talking about. <laughs> he will know what you're talking about. I was amazed. I was, listen, I was amazed. I was amazed. God Listen, dear children, let me help you. It's a beautiful thing to attend a ministry where the Holy Spirit is. Because the messages that come on the pulpit where the Holy Spirit is are not just a man's intelligent summise and, you know, collection of a verse here and there. I was amazed and blessed deeply. I already knew God gives me the word and he gives me. But I was amazed that not many days ago one of these children the commanders got visited by the lord and referred her to a sermon and i not share the details of that visitation but in that visitation the, the, the thing was your father preached this message and that, listen to the detail this is the beauty of the detail is the child is referred to a message that I preached before she joined the church. She had no clue such a message existed. In fact, I gave media an instruction because after that, the Lord spoke to me that we, we got to help you to catch up on sermons that I preached in the past that I'll never probably preach again. Let me be honest. I had forgotten I preached that sermon because I preached it during lockdown. And this dear one hadn't joined church. Had no clue. Imagine God has the archive of what your pastor has preached that you need. And you don't know it doesn't exist. And he says, your father preached this sermon. Look for it. What does that tell you? I don't come here with my head. I come with the word of God in my mouth. Do you understand when i when i told you a while ago this is why i gave you that when i told you a while ago that you'll go before god and say abba wonder number one he will know exactly what you're talking about because he's the one who told me to name the to to, to number the wonders these messages are so from his heart that sometimes he has after he reminds you remember that someone so if he's not the one who sent it he wouldn't be reminding you of it he would say Baby, I'll be so but lock down and god says your father preached this message he says huh? goes to youtube punch and gives a title specific title and this child goes to youtube punches in the title sure the message is there Now, somebody say wonder number one. I shall recover everything beginning this year. Second Kings chapter 6. Give that baby her, her wonder number one. Boo boo. 
That's all they know. You're talking recovery. That baby wants to recover his or her boo boo, right? Yeah. The mob rebelled against Israel after that. I want to show you this one so that you can understand the things God is going to do with you. Mob rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Keep going. Wonder number two, projector being. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with you is too straight for us. They said to the prophet, the man of God, that the place where we are dwelling is what? Too small for us. Let us go, we pray you, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam. Let us go cut trees. Let us make us a place there. We want to build a new house where we may dwell. And he answered, go. But now here is the wisdom of these men, the sons of the prophets. They said, one said, be content, I pray you, and go with your servants. He answered, I'll go. But now, I, as I read that, that wasn't on my script, but I, I see something. When God says that the word of the prophet establishes people and prospers people, they, came, they said, we want to go build a bigger house. This is too small. He said, go and build. We want to go cut trees. He says, go cut. And then they said, please come with us. He said, okay, I'll come. Now, I'm thinking, what if they hadn't invited him? He wasn't coming. Do you understand? One of the mysteries you have to learn this year is to invite the anointing. That's why I made you sing the song we sang a while ago. I said, ask for the rain. You gotta invite the anointing. I was listening to my audio Bible last night, Mrs. Serunkuma, and I read, and now there was a wedding in Kana, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited. I said, smart people. Smart people. Smart people. Now, this generation, they would rather invite everybody but Jesus. Why? Because they want to drink their alcohol on the wedding and they want to play their stupid music. So the one thing, that, the one person they want to invite, Jesus. Some of the weddings of these days, those of you who will get married this year, some of, some of your weddings, you don't want to come because of the stupid music you play. And it's a Saturday and I have a sermon to preach on Sunday. And then we come there, Papa, my reception. And we enter and you're boo boo stupid stupidity multiplied on a Saturday evening. No, we shall not come. God said, create for me an atmosphere and habitation wherein I shall dwell. And that's a habitation of praise. That's the word of God. So you call us to a wedding and you're playing budu, budu, stupidity. We get a headache and we have summons and my worship leaders are there. Just because you want to please your friends. So, but okay, let's come back. So, how smart? They invited who? Jesus. So imagine the music you play when Jesus is on your wedding. What do you play? Ask your neighbor, what will you play? Jesus is on your wedding, Bella. What do you play? So when, when you're coming in with your dude, tell, tell, tell the DJ, play for me, undignified. And to tell everybody, excuse me. Because I know what they say. But you know what? There are songs you listen to on weddings and you're dying. But if you're conscious of Jesus, so the very wise couple, they invited Jesus and his what? His disciples. And they came. And not long, far long into the wedding, they ran out of wine. How smart. How smart. What if they hadn't invited Jesus? Do you know how the worst wedding flop is when you run out of drinks when the wedding has just begun? But the big man was there. And mama said, they've run out of wine. He said, woman, it's not yet my time. And she said, oh, saga. You know how mothers are bullies. She said, oh, saga, you will help these people. The young man said, leave me alone. She said, you will help these people. Okay, okay, mommy, okay. First miracle, wedding, compelled by who? A mother. <laughs> Not mama. But the key here, they invited who? Jesus. Now, these sons of the prophets, he said, go. 
And they said, okay, we'll go. But they said, please come with us. And you're going to see now the wisdom of why they invited him. Not that they were anticipating trouble, but it was a good thing they invited the anointing. Oh, I beseech you this year, invite the anointing. Just invite the anointing. Praise God. Be content, I pray you, and go with your servants. And he answered, I'll go. And next verse says, so he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was failing a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And this son of the prophet, he cried and said, Alas, master, it was a borrowed axe. So, stay on the bus. He went in the bank to Kelon. Didn't invite the anointing. Nagin and Asubri, China. Went and traded in China. Now the thing has fallen in the what? The water. Now it's had to go back and tell the man of God, Alas, pastor, it was borrowed. What was borrowed? What was borrowed? And for what? So the story is hard to begin in the middle when you'll have recovery. But okay. God is merciful according to your pastor and the scriptures. But the wisdom is this. They had said, we are going to cut trees. We are going to build a bigger house. The man of God is saying, okay, go, bless. Please come with us. His, his, the anointing is part of their journey all the way. Now, the thing, the axe falls into the water. Alas, master, it was what? Borrowed. So there is loss here. And moreover, of a borrowed thing. Have you ever lost something that was borrowed? Have you ever lost a phone that was borrowed? Imagine you're holding a phone that is not yours, snatched from you. Have you ever? I know my culprits. This is where you celebrate God for good friends. This one, it ever happened to this one. And there she was, but now phone. And her friend said, No, it's okay. It's okay. You've lost something. Her last master, it was what? borrowed and the next verse says and the man of God said where fell it where did it fall and he showed him the place the man of God didn't join the funeral of it is lost lost he showed him the place and he cut down a stick and cast it in in the, in the water and the iron did swim the iron floated praise God that's a wonder for metal to float. Metal to float. And for what reason? Because a man of God threw a stick in the water. What has a stick got to do with the metal at the bottom of the sea? What? Panage, there are miracles in this walk with God. There are miracles. The iron did swim. Just imagine a heavy piece of iron. Forget the, 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 the fine ones you have today. Even now it's a metal. The spoon will sink. But in those days, the, the, the axes were rough, heavy things. And it sank to the bottom of the river. And now the thing floats, come back to the surface, waiting to be picked. Metal, heavy metal. There's power in the anointing of God Almighty. And the man of God said, next verse says, and, and, and therefore said, take it up to you. And he put out his hand and he took it up. And I'm sure he looked at the man of God and said, boy, I'm glad we invited you. Whoosh. It was what? Borrowed. Now that's wonderful recovery. And here's the key to the recovery. Some of you, a stick. Here's the interesting thing is, he threw, he, he cut a stick. And you say, why? That, that's a picture of the cross. Because everything you find there in the stick, it refers to everything that refers to the cross. It's a tree. It's wood. Maybe put it, put it there for them. I, I want to show you that there's recovery in Jesus Christ. It's the work of the cross that will compel recovery this year. It's going to be a wonderful work of the spirit. Honoring the sacrifice of Jesus. Not honoring your perfection. Not honoring that you've done everything right. No, don't put yourself past God's recovery plan. 
God has an insurance plan for you on the cross. Not what you paid in the insurance company, but what Jesus paid on the cross. Give me, give me that stick in Hebrew. Stick. In the verse before, he, he, he cut a stick, threw it in the other, and the iron did swim. Dear Lord, let there be recovery in project. Can you guys work on, we began the year too slow. What's happening? Where is projector anyway? Baby girl, let's be 2024, right? Okay, so tree. It says tree. You know what the Bible says? Christ has redeemed us, redeemed us from the curse of the law, for it is written, cast is everybody who hangs on that tree. So the cross is referred to as a tree. Then they give you the meaning of wood. Wood. Remember the story of Isaac? As he walked up Mount Moriah, the Bible says he was carrying what? Wood. But that was a picture of the cross. As Jesus would carry his cross up Golgotha. And Isaac said to his father, Daddy, I see the fire, I have the wood. Where is the lamb? Okay? So, tree, wood, all referring to the cross. Timber, stalk, whatever, giving the name. Gallows. It's interesting. It also comes, a tree, and then it, it's called a gallows because it's a, gallows is a killing weapon. The cross upon which Jesus Christ, the Son of God, would die. So, or you, for you, when you're reading the Old Testament, and this is where the teaching ministry is so important. The things that seem simple to you are deeper than you think. They are deeper, deep depth. So the man of God says, you want to recover. Moreover, what is borrowed, it's impossible. In the natural sense, you need the supernatural. You need divine intervention. And the only thing that intervenes in your life is the work of the cross. He cut a stick, threw it in the water. How does a stick cause iron to float? Except there's a supernatural message about that stick. There has to be a supernatural message about that stick. Again, when the waters were bitter, in which book was it? Uh, Numbers? Moses took a tree again, threw it in the bitter waters, and the waters became sweet. Again, the cross. But now look at what you'd call impossible to recover. And God told me, speak to people that have taken loans, that have debts, that have things that were in their hands, trusted in their hands, and they got destroyed or lost or whatever. It, talk to people that have impossible situations that they think it's irrecoverable. You do not expect an iron axe head to swim, but God said, I'll make the impossible possible. Beginning this year, people shall recover what they lost. I'm not in your life. I'm only in your life as your pastor. But the details are saved between you and God. Except for that which God will reveal to me. But that which you look upon as impossible to recover, you shall recover it. It shall begin to play back, back, back. When God says the years the locust has eaten, he knows how to rewire you years, make you look younger, give you fresh energy, and cause things to sort of come and begin to happen in a way that causes you to recover what you even... Some of you recover in a way that you'll even not realize that you recovered until you stumble on this someone again, and you're like, by the way... <gasps> but in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the anointing on your life. Those of you here and those that are online, those that are listening to me live and listening later, the anointing and the power of recovery for that which looks impossible. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the children, men and women, boys and girls, sowers and givers, ministers, people that have stood in your house and called upon your name. That which had fallen from their hands and sank to the bottom of the sea and sank to the bottom of the river, I speak to it in the name of Jesus axe head i command you to swim i command you to float money i command you to float opportunities i command you to float projects i command you to float contracts i command you to float promotions i command you to float health i command you to float that which was sunk in the rivers and waters of destruction i command you to float come back to the surface in the name of jesus the anointing and command of recovery brings you back up and the people take you up by their hands in Jesus' name. Somebody receive that declaration. We shall recover because loss is a very painful thing. 
sometimes you look like a fool you look like you're hopeless you look like you're going nowhere and there's not a single person unless you were born yesterday that has not suffered loss some people's losses are big others are small nevertheless it is loss some people just lost time time now let's go deeper into this message thank you holy spirit first samuel chapter 30 when i read this story and i want you to follow it first samuel chapter 30 for those that are writing write verse 1 to 20 when i read 20 verses bible reading version i mean session hallelujah somebody say time to recover wonder number one i shall recover all it begins this year recovering relationships he spoke to me so many things some people are visited by devils some of you the man was supposed to propose last year and he got visited by a demon of confusion then others begin hopping around with somebody else who is not theirs You say again, da. Ya wunze. Ajakuda. The one that is for you will come back. Others have lost their husbands to stupidity, to witchcraft. Because a woman, a, a, a husband stealer, bewitched my husband. The power of God is stronger than witchcraft. My woman became rebellious. She doesn't listen to me. She runs and raves like a wild cat. There is no soul that is beyond the power of God. My children are crazy. They don't listen. They are like mad little children. As if they are demon possessed. We shall recover all. Relationships will be recovered. I say they shall be recovered. The husband will come back home. The wife will begin to honor you. And the children will begin to listen. When you're talking to a young generation. Among whom many are not married. They say very few amens. Because they don't know what it means to be married. And the man is stupid. But he was not born with a stupidity. It's a demon that came in. But when you're married and your man begins to act stupid, you remember this message. In the right places. But if I were you, I would invest now so that it doesn't even happen. Some of you children, why do you think God makes you sit under me when he knows you're not married? He's helping you invest. But then when the word comes and you say, that's for Mr. Kasuja. Sister, are you going to be a Catholic nun? If I were you, I would say my amens now. Do you understand? By the time the devil comes, it's too late. The ground is softened. Do you understand? Don't put yourself past the someone that is going on now. You're wondering, what does it mean like to be married to a stupid man? A stubborn woman? You don't want to know. Praise God. But when push comes to shove and, and it looks like it's rock bottom. It can be recovered. Let's go through this passage. It's very instructive. It's what I want to major on today. And you'll be helped. It came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag. On the third day. That the Amalekites had invaded the south. And Ziklag. And smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. Now Ziklag. When David was being hunted by King Saul. The first king of Israel. Jealousy was making him hunt this young man down. 
because God had chosen him to be king. David runs from his own country, Israel, and ends up in the land of the, uh, 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 the, 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 the Philistines. And they gave him a city, they gave him a little town called Ziklag to live in. And he lived there. But now, so I'm going to read this story and I'm going to give you a little bit more detail. So Ziklag is where he lived with his men, his small army that he had at the time. This is before he becomes king at Hebron. He's anointed to be king, but he's not yet king. Okay? So, while he had gone on a certain expedition, which I'm going to explain to you, the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, smitten Ziklag, David's city, where his wives and children were, burned it with fire, next verse, let's keep going, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, neither great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Now, God is so smart. I'll come back to that. Next verse. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. Their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. How do you feel? What do you say? The houses are burned to ashes. The wives are gone. The children are gone. Everything is gone. The furniture is, I mean, you, you, everything is burnt. And the people you love are gone. It's only you remaining. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept. That's right. Sometimes it's okay to cry. Until they had no more power to weep. That's real crying. When you cry, until you can't cry no more. You cry, oh. And you can imagine male voices. Oh. Ah. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> And until the guy can't cry in my hands. Mm, 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 mm. Meanwhile, these are warriors. By that time, they have no more power to cry. They have cried. These are guys, I'm telling you. By that time, they have no more strength. They have taken all the battle strength, used it to cry. When they were done crying, nothing left. No more power to weep. Next verse. And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. Children of God, we all go through these things. Distress is something that visits greatness in the making. Can I say that again? Distress is something that will always visit greatness in the making. There is not, show me one character in the scripture that was great and ended great that was never visited by distress. If you show them to me, I'll just prove to you that you didn't study them properly. Distress. I never see somebody destined for greatness under distress and laugh. He was greatly distressed for the people's of stoning him this is the one time David's army turned against him and it was a 3D army discontented, distressed and this what? disturbed they called it the 3D army they were in debt, distressed discontented, now they want to stone him because the soul of other people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters now, is it David who had taken the children? His own children were missing. His own wives were missing. This is the, look here everybody. These are the occupational hazards of leadership. I see people in ministries looking for greatness and titles and they think leadership is a title. I also want to be a pastor. One young girl said, I also want to be a pastor's wife. I looked for my African stool. I said, Gendo no Winfred Kaguisa. Oh, you get a conaye. Gendo no nye Jessica Kayanjo, you get a coachy. Oh, you got a quitting mummy. Bambi Zala Vana over quitting mummy. Because a big Janoko and mummy canisa. Binji, tell you never tell them in Swahili what comes with being mummy in church. 
Okay, speak to them in Luganda. I say this little girl, you want to be called mommy. So some people just want this sweet little comfy, nice sounding mommy. Oh, and then you mommy. Meanwhile, that's before you kuzala anything. You want to be called mommy. <laughs> then others, pastor, papa, daddy. Nange vampite papa. Have you papaed anything? Children, little children. And so now, people have egos. People are just hungry for titles. Talk to the pastors. They will tell you what it takes to be a leader. They will tell you. You want to be a pastor's wife? Look for a pastor's wife and talk to them. So that you know, it, it's not owners. CBT, well, these are not titles. It's ministry. It is service. It's costly. A man, everybody wants to be king, but nobody wants to walk through the, the, the process of kingship. The man is greatly what distressed and as if it was his fault that people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved. Now, David didn't attack his own city. He didn't take his men's wives and children. In fact, his own wife and children were taken. It's the story of pastors. When the ministry is going through something and people forget the pastor is part of the ministry. <laughs> Revelation. That the Jews want to stone Moses for suffering in the wilderness and they forgot he's also what? In the wilderness with them. He was not floating on a helicopter showing them on a, with a stick. Imagine Pastor Moses on a helicopter in the wilderness and the people are walking on the ground and he's like, shh, shh, shh. And the helicopter is going, pa, 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 pa. Hey, you're hungry. Shoo, shoo, keep walking. No, he was with them. But they wanted to stone David. Leadership. Everybody say leadership. Because the soul of the people grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Hallelujah. So be slow to stone leadership. Be slow to stone the pastors. They are in the boat with you. The leader is in the boat with you. The man encouraged himself in the Lord. Next verse. Let's gather some speed now. And David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray you bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought hither the ephod to David. That, that was a, an instrument of inquiring from the Lord. And David inquired at the Lord saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? The Amalekites. Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Pursue. You shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Hallelujah. Who is David? Beloved. The loss of the beloved is never an end. Can I say that again? Any loss to the beloved of God is never an end. There will always be an instruction, pursue. You will overtake them. And without fail, somebody, without fail. Somebody say, without fail, we recover. We don't recover some. We recover all and more. I shall recover all. Some of you lost your hair. You shall recover all. Don't laugh at that, Lawrence. You have no clue how hair is important to the lady seated on your left. A woman's hair. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Pursue. So the man, the beloved asked the Lord, shall I pursue? In other words, the opportunity, I lost, the things I lost, should I go after them? Lord, is there hope? Should I go after? In other words, this is one way of saying, should I entertain? Should I nurse hope in my heart? Love hopes all things. Should I nurse expectation in my heart? Love hopes all things. 
Are you listening to the children of God? What seems lost and gone? Don't build a grave there and say it's over. God is with you. Shall I pursue? Shall I nurse hope? In other words, shall I pursue, Lord, sh should my heart, my mind, today in the, in, in the spiritual sense, because we're New Testament people, here David would go after a physical army. Today, we pursue with our hearts, with our spirits. In other words, the man is your husband. And he seems stolen. And I gave up on that. Hey, you gave up. Covenant husband. Covenant wife. You, you gave him up to who? To who? Okay. Don't you know when you give a cat a cookie, it will ask for a glass of milk too? If the devil takes your husband and you say, I gave up, you know what is coming for next? Your firstborn son. Because he learned you give up. The things that I had for you, you give up. So you say, I gave up on that man. He's stupid. Yes, that's why he needs you. Go ask Abigail. David was going to kill Nabal. But Nabal, the foolish, needed a wise woman, Abigail. So some of you, when you wake up and find yourself married to a stupid man, you are in your anointing. <laughs> to sort him. Because should you give up that man, he's finished. Some of you are, will be God's extension of mercy to a foolish man. These things I'm saying are heavy. Don't, but don't you ever tell him. Shakira, don't ever tell him. Don't say, I am God's extension of mercy to you. No. Keep it in the closet. So Abigail is married to a fool, but she has held his household together and the guy is prospering in his stupidity. Because of a woman who knew how to work with God. Some of you women, the day you give up on your husband is the day he's finished. And then God will ask you, you think when you took vows with him, you thought it was a walk in the park. I'm, I allowed you, I knew he was stupid. But if you stay with him five years from now, he won't be stupid anymore. Do you understand? It's the same thing with men. Don't give up on your wives. But as Christ loved the church. It's supposed to be a covering. So when that devil, I said, when you give a cat a cookie, it's going to say, I'm thirsty. I want a glass of milk too. So you give up on one thing here, Pastor Rona. It's a, ah, this is a giver up. Even put, give, put this one. Among those that give up, this one is one of them. I'll take more territory. So he takes your husband. He begins to come for your children one by one. But when you tell him of here, he will never touch the children. Do you understand? When you tell him of here, you'll never touch the money. So be careful that you don't. So David asks, shall I pursue? The translation of that in modern day spiritual language is, should I entertain hope? Should my heart go after? Should my mind, should my prayer, should my utterance, should my expectations go after this thing? Or should I just say, ah, chigenze, chigenze. It's gone. No. Shall I pursue? That's hope. And God says, yes, you shall pursue don't let your heart give up on it don't let your prayer give up on it don't let your spirit give up on it don't let your pursuit give don't, don't let your fervency give up on that people give up on their ministries their callings because it became hard no pursue that anointing it's yours that dream you had was true the supermarket you dreamt about is from God. The business, the office you saw in the dream is really yours. Pursue. And God says, without fail, you shall recover all. He specifically says, without fail. Pinch your neighbor, without fail. Without fail. Without, in other words, you know why? Because you're going to ask, what if I pursue and fail? So he inoculated you against that thought and said, without fail. 
you shall recover i don't know who i'm talking to and i feel i'm talking to somebody online that needs to pursue something pursue something a job god said was yours and yet the company is saying it's not yours pursue with abba's word say but god you said my father said you shall recover all without what fail it looked hopeless the enemy has gone days ahead of them the city is burnt wives and children are gone our energies are depleted the men want to stone me should i pursue or i go commit suicide hopeless if there's a reason for feeling hopeless that was one reason somebody lost money and they gave up these are men who have lost families families wives and children do you understand that serious loss and the city is burnt down to ashes you don't even have a home and yet god scorns it and says pursue you recover somebody says recovery begins this year devil stupid you will give up everything next verse so david went the moment god said pursue he went he and the 600 men that were with him and they came to the brook they saw where those that were left behind stayed all right and but david pursued he and 400 men for 200 abode behind which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. I'll talk about that another time, tale of another day. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. Now why are you paying attention to an Egyptian? Ah, there are instruments along your way that God will use including Egyptians including Egyptians. Are you hearing me? Some of the people that God will use are Egyptians. Not born again. Do you understand? Some of the testimonies will have Egyptians attached to them. That you met a man who is not even born again. A woman who is not born again. Who pointed you to something. Or who introduced you to somebody. Who, do, do you understand? Do, don't despise. Be careful how you treat people. That the Egyptians doesn't mean they can't be used of God. Come on, Agapetos. Okay, I remember a story in the Bible where God said to the, to the Jews, God tell the Egyptians to give you gold. So who gave the gold? The Egyptians. So you're going to meet somebody who is not born again and they'll introduce you to somebody who will give you a job, your deal, your contract, your whatever. S some places, there are Egyptians dotted along your path that God wants to use. They may not even stay in your life after. They may not necessarily have a continuing relationship with you. But God has determined them to be instruments. Then others will become born again because of you. But the Egyptians. Tell your neighbor, be mindful of the Egyptian. They might be used of God. So they found an Egyptian in the field, brought him to David. They gave him bread and he did eat. They made him drink water. And the next verse says, And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had eaten no bread, no drunk any water. Three days and three nights. First fast. But you want to hear this guy's story. Why we're saying you have to pay attention. And this is where love kicks in. You never know who God is going to use. I'm not saying go chasing after every Egyptian, sniffing them like, are you the one with my opportunity? No, I am saying God will put them along your path. Don't go looking for them. You'll become weird. You will meet them without planning to meet them. They didn't plan to meet this boy. But God plotted him there. So don't you go jumping on every Egyptian and every Muslim. Egyptians, where are you? My opportunities, no, don't do that. You'll end up in trouble. They will take advantage of you. The ones God will use, you'll put them along your path. 
so David said unto him when his strength recovered, To whom do you belong and whence art thou? In other words, who do you belong to and where are you from? He said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. I want you to see the difference between us and other users and how we deal with people God will use in recovery. Because there's so many things that go into recovery. A young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. My master left me because three days ago I fell sick. So when he fell sick, his master dumped him to die. But Agape doesn't work like that. Now, the one they dumped is about to work against them. Had they taken him, David would have no tool. Somebody is missing something. They did not love this boy. When he fell sick, they dumped him. We don't abandon our sick. We don't abandon our wounded. This is what I keep telling the Agape family. You don't abandon him, brother or sister, because they are sick or because they, they sinned or because they did something. We don't abandon our wounded. Satan wants to eat them. We're not going to take them and slice them for him and feed him for breakfast. No. Instead, we bandage them up, fix them up. Because should we give them up to the devil, he'll destroy them, probably even use them against you. If these Amalekites had not dumped this boy, he wouldn't become a tool in David's hands. But when he was sick, they counted him to be useless. Because three days ago, I fell sick. And the master said, good for nothing. The next verse says, we made an invasion upon the... Now he's telling David what happened. We made an invasion upon the south of the Cherethites. And upon the coast which belongs to Judah. And upon the south of Caleb. He knows everything. And we burned Ziklag with fire. Now he's our inside man. Do you understand? He's our inside man. So you'll meet a guy from some company that has been making money and in one hour conversation, he'll give you secrets you didn't know. We burnt Ziklag with fire. David said to him, can you bring me down to this company? Can you? This is man of God, David, with an army, but he needs this boy. So sometimes we despise people that God would use. You just never know. Miracles sometimes are hidden in people we meet. That's why God said, Always be quick to entertain strangers. Because in so doing, some have entertained angels not knowing. Not knowing. There are so many stories I can tell you about that. Can you bring me down to this company? He said, swear unto me by God that you'll neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master again. He doesn't want to go back to his master. And I'll bring you down to this company. The help David needed God put it in an Egyptian young man. How humble we need to be. How humble we need to be. This year I prophesy. God will use people in your life that you least expected. Including Muslims. Including those that don't want anything to do with Christians. I speak people to be plotted along your way. And I speak it as a prophet of God. I stand in the prophetic to create divine appointments along your path men and women that will favor you that will open doors for you that will introduce you to people you need to meet that will open doors business doors deals contracts men and women that will speak on your behalf even when they are not born again i command them along your path in the name of jesus because you'll meet them and you'll not miss them say amen to that one it says don't hand me over to my master I am weaving your recovery beginning this year. And we are triggering it by these declarations. So when he had brought him down, behold, the Amalekites were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking, having a party, dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken. When I was reading this portion, do you know what the Lord said to me, Lily? He said their party was real, but it was fake. How do you reconcile the two? Their victory party was real, but it was a lie. Do you understand somebody having a celebration that I have finished you, but they haven't finished you? The whole, this is the wonder. That, that's why your head is me. The wonder is they are having a party of victory, yet they don't have the victory. Arthur, you have to come and help me preach this one. They, they think they have a victory. To them, it's a real victory. But in the eyes of God, he says the victory is a lie. The party is a lie. Because Abba says, it's not over until I say kapatata. It's not over until I say it is over. I am the one who gives the last party. You don't have the last laugh. God calls.
holds the laughter. He who sits in heaven laughs. So when your enemies are throwing a party and saying, Tuba Maze, I don't know who you met, Nagamba Yakumala. Tell your neighbor, I am not finishable. People say, Tuba Kamala, Kaguayo, Kaguamu, that one is finished. No, listen. If he who sits in heaven laughs, I laugh too. Because I sit in heaven too. God will give you the last laugh. The last party is your party. The last word is your word. The last laugh is your laugh. It's not over until my father says it's over. Yes, you can have a party. But that's not the final party. You can have a victory chant, but that's not the last victory. You can have a victory parade, but it's a lie. It's false. It's not true. It's not real. It's a lie. So some of you have seen your enemies celebrate false victories. I don't know who I'm talking to. I need deep children. Some of you have seen your enemies celebrate false victories. Throwing false parties. Throwing their hands in the air. Ah, yeah, oh, no. You've not. Because the final laugh is ours. When Abba says, pursue, pursue, you will recover all. That means we are on the way to interrupt their party. <laughs> yeah. Is anybody hearing me? Somebody say, I'm on the way to interrupt the devil's lie. That lying party. That lying victory parade. That deception. That deceptive. Oh, they took my wife. No. interrupt that party we are going to scatter that party we are going to scatter that party that took your wife your children your husband your money we scatter that party no we are not finishable love never fails love never fails are you hearing me love never fails love never fails love hopes all things love believes all things am i talking to anybody here love hopes all things love believes all there's nothing we can't recover are you hearing me there's nothing we can't recover there's nothing god can't restore there's nothing we can't recover there's nothing beyond god's recovery anointing we shall recover all they were spread all over having a party they were across, there were many. They were eating and what? Drinking. Roast mucho more. They were drinking and dancing. It was real. It was not a dance in the dreams. It was a real dance. Amalekite dance. Amalekite alcohol. Amalekite chicken and pork. They thought we've won. I don't know who I'm talking to. The captive banange. The Abe, the captives were real. They were there. They went and looked at David's wife and spat in her face. Stupid. The captives are real. The children are blocked up somewhere. The party is real. But let me tell you the things. And this is what God was telling me. Listen to me, children. He told me the loss of my children looks so real to them. Your loss looks so real. And it looks so final. But tell them, says Abba, it is not final. Even though it looks real, it's not final. I will help you recover. You recover that opportunity. That place will look for you again. That opportunity will look for you again. Those people will look for you again. Some things look so real. Let me tell you something. Because the devil is real. What he does are real. But our realm of reality is more real than their reality. Our realm of reality transforms their reality. Our realm of reality calls their reality a lie. Our realm of reality calls theirs a lie. That's why the Bible says, why we look not on the things that are seen. We look not on the things that are seen. No, we look not on the things that are seen. We look not on the bank statement. We look not on the rented house. We look not on the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. But the things that are unseen are real. So we look at that party. It seems, it seems, it seems real. But it is temporal. Devil, your party is temporal. Ma 
Abraham, uh, Satan, you part his temple. We interrupt it today. I said, we interrupt it today. When you see the devil's real party, sin, party, and you imagine yours which is unseen, you think the devil's victory is more real against you. Neda, your victory is real. <laughs> more than satan's victory i said your victory is more real than the devil's party this is the devil's party but it's a lie somebody say it's a lie somebody shout it's a lie somebody say it's a lie the devil's party is a lie satan's victory is temple it's a lie shout it's a lie and when we come in we break up that celebration Mama, we break up, we enter their party and we scatter. <laughs> Is anybody hearing me? Is anybody hearing me? We enter their party, their wedding, and we begin to scatter. We upset the music system, we pour water into the fireplaces. We scatter. Amalekite, who gave you a party? You're celebrating a party after taking things that belong to me. That party has come to an end. Somebody said that party has come to an end. Today I decree and declare, devil, your party has come to an end. Can somebody take 30 seconds and talk to the devil? Tell the devil, devil, your party has come to an end. I scatter, kata, kata, kata. Somebody scatter the devil's party. Your name, scatter the devil's party. generation no 
you can't. Manta Palekatata. Let go of my children. Let go of Kampala. Let go of the Agape generation. We've come for them today. There are brothers and sisters that are supposed to join, join this army, be in this camp, be in this house. And the Amalekites had them. We deliver them today. We release them today. We have come for them today. The men are coming in. The women are coming in. The boys are coming back. The girls are coming back. Remember the Americans has taken everybody in special forces. Open your mouth and pray. Every minister pray. Every commander pray. What you have and have to know now. Amalekites we are to all the way. Rise up as an army. They are children that they were taken. They are children that Amalekites are taken. They are men and women that Amalekites are taken. We go for them today. Shut up, Bring them out. Wield your sword. Wield your sword. Wield your sword, commander. Wield your sword, special forces. Wield your sword, leaders. Wield your sword, ministers. Wield your sword. We are in the Amalekite camp. Destroy. Devour. Destroy. Devour. Destroy with your sword. Devour. Lord, Father, you said we shall pursue and recover all without fail. Lord, I recover my children, all my children, all my sons and daughters. I recover Manchata, the army you gave me. I recover the sons and daughters. Mareketa with their resources, with their money, Shanta Palate, Rekete Pataya. Your sword is activated. Commanders, your sword is activated against the Amalekites. Let your sword devour special forces. You are soul winners. You are soul winners. Special forces, where are you? You are soul winners. Get them back. Get them back. Get them back. Get them back. With resources, with money, with gold and silver, with opportunities, we recover all. Shande pate. Our sword is strong. Our sword is sharp. Our sword is double-edged. Give me one more minute. Scatter that party. Quate your faith. Grab your brothers and sisters. Scatter that party. Mareshe te payende. You men that are watching online. There's recovery to your money. Recovery to your finances. Recovery of your glory. Every man and woman who was visited by shame, I restore your glory. There's a recovery of glory. Glory of your career. Glory of your business. Glory of your investments. Glory of the lands you lost. The properties you lost. We speak recovery. Recovery. I said recovery, total recovery. The houses are coming back. The lambs are coming back. The children are coming home. The daughters are coming home. The sons are coming home. The company is being restored. The business is being restored. Your job is being restored. Mashatalapaya. Their dancing is over. Their drinking is over. Their celebration is over. The Amalekite celebration is over. The Amalekite dancing is over. The Amalekite drinking is over. The Amalek party is over. Party over. Somebody tell them party is over. Party is over. Party is over. Party is over. Shanta Palata. We didn't come.
come in the kingdom to play games. We fight for our own. We fight for our brothers. We fight for our sisters. We fight for those taken captive. I said we fight for those taken captive. We fight for our children. I fight for my children. Mariele kitelem parete kolata. Shalala palendela. We fight for our marriages. Reite le balende. We fight for our companies. Roche le balada. We fight for our investments. Remba le kotula be. We fight for what God gave us. Marada balade. We fight for what belongs to us. It doesn't matter where it is. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. And more. 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 Take more. You recover yours. And then you also take that which belonged to the Amalekites. Now that's a secret. We recover more. We take what was ours which they took. Then we take what was theirs too. We slay them. We take what belongs to us. Party is over. <laughs> Party is over. Oh, hallelujah. Karemba Radagaya. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise in His house. The victory is ours. The final party is ours. I said the final celebration is ours. I said the final love is ours. The final chant is ours. The final shout is ours. I said the final glory is ours. Give the Lord praise one more time. When the Lord told me, son, don't let the Amalekite party lie to you. The Amalekite celebration. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. Come on, help me out. Somebody say it's a lie. God said, who said, were they not having a party? They were having a party. Did they have captives? They had captives. Did they burn the city? They burned the city. So the attack was real. But our power and our victory is greater and more real. We overturn. I said we overturn. I said we overturn. Look at it. They say the reason they were eating and drinking and dancing is because of all, read it, because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. So they had what looked like accomplished victory. This is when you say, my marriage is gone, gone. My business is gone, gone. My job is gone, gone. My whatever is gone, gone. The doctor said, we give you three months to live. Thank you, doctor, but who died and made you God? You are not God. The Bible has never said that times of your life are written in the doctor's report. No. The Bible says that times of your life are written in my hand. You shall recover your health. If you're in a health battle, battle for your health, you shall recover. That cancer shall die. That heart problem shall die. Without an operation in India. So because of all the spoil they had taken out of those two lands, they were dancing. Anybody ever seen your enemies dance? <laughs> Anybody ever seen your enemies dance because the boyfriend dumped you and the girl who didn't like you said, Namanya, she can't even keep a man. She's stupid. She'll never get mad. Never seen her. Because you're suffering a heartbreak. They danced because you suffered a heartbreak. 
They danced because you lost money. They danced because you're out of a job. And God watched them dance. Next verse. Verse 17 says, And David, the beloved of God, smote them from twilight even unto the evening of the next day. From twilight to the evening of the next day. It was almost like a 24 hour battle. He left nothing alive. And there escaped not a man of them. What a victory. There escaped not a man of them. And then he says, Save 400 young men. Young men, I think, were not counted as men. <laughs> Which rode upon camels and fled. David recovered. And David recovered all, just like the word of the Lord had said, all that the Amalekites had carried away. I told you. And David rescued his two wives. That's the day the women say, I'm glad I'm married to you. You know, when the woman is taken captive, she's thinking, where is this trouser that I married? I'm here suffering and they are taking me mukungu job. This is when women appreciate the anointing they married. That oh, he was talking in tongues all the time. I thought he was powerless. Until the devil is strangling you in the night. And it's your tongue talking husband. He lays a hand. And the devil says, okay. If it was not for your David, but for a moment when they were being taken, it looked like they had hopeless husbands. Who are these stupid men? He recovered all. David recovered all the Amalekites and he rescued his two wives. Next verse says, and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great. In other words, even the kilogram of sugar they had stolen. We got it back. Neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. What a recovery. Ten people have clapped because they have the recovery revelation. If I was the one sitting there, I would be clapping. Because the God of David is your God. Somebody say, Amalekite, your party ends today. Sorry to interrupt your celebration, but we are not sorry. It's a false celebration. Imagine a guy went and married another man's wife. with his best man and, and the way these days you should see them on YouTube I especially get mad at the girls but okay we are talking to the guy the guy took another man's what and the church unknowingly is playing for him a song. Dude walks in with his best man. You know how they are. You know how you dance to Moyingira. Harete Fuba. Stolen wife. Stolen wife. And the anointing asks, is there anybody who knows any reason why and those who know the owner are present 
So I want to ask World Restoration Center Church. Is there anybody here who knows any reason why the Amalekites should not celebrate? Every hand goes up. There are four! Party over! <laughs> the Amalekites should celebrate. The woman he has is not his. The children he has are not his. The food he has is not his. The owner has arrived. Don't give up just because the guy is throwing a party next door. It's not over till God says it's over. Nothing was lacking. The David recovered all. Verse 20 says, And David took all the flocks and the herds which they drove before those other cattle and said, This is David's spoil. Now, what you miss here is this. David didn't just recover what was his. But because he killed the Amalekites, even what belonged to them, he took. Because Proverbs 6, I believe 6 says, when a thief is caught, he has to pay seven times. That means when you catch the thief, you find him with what he stole from you, then you find him with what was his, and you tell him, never steal from me again. Sevenfold. Projector, give me Proverbs 6. Then it Proverbs 6 somewhere. I forget the verse. Sevenfold. I may help you look for it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give us from verse 30. But sometimes a man may be hungry and he steals. So what? Whether you're hungry, you stole. Men do not despise a thief. If he steals to satisfy his no, we still despise. That was Old Testament. Satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, like our father found the Amalekites, he shall restore what? Sevenfold. That means he gives back what he stole and then he goes to his savings account. To be told, never ever steal from me. Sevenfold, he shall give all the substance of his house. Now, all of you that ever lost money, fortunes, opportunities, things, whatever you lost. Now, I am not saying that if a guy stole your, 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 your girlfriend, go get seven girls. No. I'm saying you recover. If she's meant to be your wife, She'll come back. She's seven times better than she was when she was first stolen. Because it was her stupidity that allowed her to be stolen. She'll come back wiser. But if she wasn't for you and she was stolen, the one God gives you will be a wife of comfort. You'll tell her, I'm glad Nakatu they left. I would have missed you. You are seven, ten times better than her. Mama, some of your wife is celebrating. You are her sevenfold. Praise God. Now, they say this is David's what? Spoil. Now, I began by telling you, listen, God is so merciful. Do you know that what happened to Ziklag was actually David's fault. Some of you that are close to me have told you this. But let me open your eyes. This is chapter 30. And I'm finishing. In chapter 29, David, listen carefully. You go back and read it. David, because he had been persecuted by Saul, and he had run away to go be with the Philistines, he had lived with the Philistines, they had given him that little city, because his own were against him. Now the Philistines were going to war against Israel. And David, because Israel had turned against him, he told the kings of Philistia, let me come with you to war against your enemies. But the Philistine enemies were actually the Jewish people, David's people. 
So he was with the Philistines trying to go with them to attack Israel. Open door. Spiritual open door for the devil to attack. Most people don't know that. In fact, I've never heard a preacher preach it. Now, what saves David, and this is when your footsteps are ordered by the Lord, when you're loved of God. What saves David? Listen to the story. I, I love taking you into the intricacies of the word of God. And you happy you belong to World Restoration Center Church. And then some donkey comes and tells you we are a cult. I said, whoever calls us a cult is the cult. So now, so David, that's a donkey for sure. Not a sheep, certainly not. So, <laughs> my sheep know my voice, right? So if a sheep hears the shepherd's voice and says, that's a cult. That sheep is not a sheep, it's just wearing it. That's a donkey. Now, so David is with the Philistines. Now, what saved our father is this. And this is a lesson why we don't attack our own. Some of the Philistines, generals, commanders, went to the Philistine kings and says, ha, ha, Who is this you're bringing with us? David. This is David. They said so. David, have you forgotten? This is David concerning whom the women sang. David has killed Saul has killed thousands. David has killed 10,000. Then they, they shook their commander. They said, have you forgotten? He's the one who killed our champion. Wait! You want him to be on our army? And they said, what better way for him to win his master's favor back than to turn against us in the battle? So they said, we will go to battle. David will turn against us in battle. At Bay, Bubinyo. Leave him behind. So they convinced the king who had given David asylum to send him away from the army. Kumbe God was delivering him. So the Philistines rejected David. They said, ah, you can't come with us. Our generals and commanders don't want you. Now, let me show you the gravity of this. That, that war is the war in which Saul died and his three sons, including David's covenant friend, Jonathan. They died in that war. Now imagine if David had fought on the Philistine side. He would never have become king because he would have slain the Lord's anointed. He would have slain his covenant friend. Everything about him would have turned. There are things God does for us or that happen to us and we don't know why. That is the battle that killed Saul and his three sons, including Jonathan. How would David have lived with himself had he participated in that battle? What tears would he have cried? Because later on, after that battle, a man runs to him and tells David, Saul is dead and his three sons, including Jonathan. David didn't care much about the other two sons. He says, how do you know Saul is dead? He gave him the crown. Jonathan, how do you know? He's because this is his friend. And David fasted and cried that whole day and then killed the man who brought the news because the man lied. You see how God helped this man? When you loved of God, you're helped, which is why I said it's important to follow counsel and not be in rebellion. Because he killed that boy. And you know what that man had said to David? He said, I found Saul wounded. He asked me to kill him. And I killed him. Here is his sword and crown. Kumbe, he was lying. Because the, the previous book, this is this is First Samuel, right? Chapter 31. When you read second. Samuel chapter 1 you actually see Saul died on his own sword he threw himself so this guy found him dead but he thought because Saul persecuted David he thought when he tells David I'm the one who killed him David would shake his hand and say thank you that was my enemy thank you Kumbi, this man love does not rejoice in iniquity so David said, your own mouth has testified against you that you killed the Lord's anointed. He commanded his soldiers, they killed this guy. Kumbi, he lied against his own life. Saul had been wounded. He asked his armor bearer, kill me. And the armor bearer said, no, I can't kill you. So Saul threw himself on his sword and he died. Then his armor bearer, so his king was dead. He also threw himself on his sword and died. So that stupid guy came, found them dead with the crown there. He picked them, went to David and told a lie. That I'm the one who killed. Because he wanted a gift from David. 
David said, your blood be upon your head. For your mouth has testified against you saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. So they killed him. But the real death of Saul is in chapter 31. He fell on his one. Now, David who punishes the guy had himself wanted to be part of the war. So do you see how chaotic it would have become? Now what God, when, when that was the realm of the spirit saw, David, God's beloved, is turning against the beloved nation of God. A window in the spirit was opened and the enemy attacked. Because David had never been attacked like that. Or come close to losing like that day. It's because the spiritual window was open. Sometimes when we warn you against windows, and that's why teaching, admonishment, counsel is very important. That window. But love never lets go of the beloved. So they took everything. But nothing was destroyed except the buildings. So they took the women and men, children, captive. But none died. And God was teaching his beloved a lesson. He recovered all. I come to tell you today. I began the message by saying, even if it was your fault, that's why I came to show you. David, it was his fault the enemy attacked. But God did not give up on him. Because he loved him. Because he loved him. So your 2024 wonder number one you shall recover all and how much you shall recover all and what you shall recover all and what and more give the Lord praise in this house one of the things the Lord wanted you to see in that passage they took wives they took children that means marriages were being broken up. Posterity was being interrupted. Family. And God told me, I'll restore families. I'll begin to restore families this year. <laughs> families. From those of you that are dating and made of God, and the enemy is trying to fight you, to those of you that are married, and your marriage is struggling, to those of you with children that are in trouble, drugs, alcohol, disobedience, any relationship he said relationships i'll restore relationships david's own men wanted to stone him because of this thing and the lord restored that as well so i don't know how many of you have been stoning me in secret but i promise you we shall recover all tell you never take back the stones Some are smiling and they don't know pastors are always being stoned by some people. He said this and he said this. Now we are our wives. Now we are our children. We shall recover all. So the greatest restoration there, relationships. And then money, spoil. And David went and gave gifts to the elders. He says, look what I got from this battle. This year you will celebrate the children of God don't lose. Somebody said we don't lose. We don't lose. Give the Lord praise again one more time. Wonder number one. My people online. Put the giving information on the screen, your children. This pastor always has to tell the media. Someone is ending. Put giving information. Oprah, okay, it's your assignment from today. Every time I'm winding is someone. You go tell Minister Irene. Put the giving information. Someone is ending. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody say, we're going somewhere. Today we've interrupted the Amalekite party. And ours is just beginning. Ours has begun. Party after party. Get your tithe and offering to the Lord. And as you get your money to the Lord, is there anybody who has never given your life to Jesus Christ? Anybody never given your life to Jesus Christ? And you want to do it today? You want to give your life to the Lord today?
Are you sure? How great is our God? Sing with me. Now there's, there's, there's someone here and God is requiring you to sow seed for recovery. Especially financial recovery. I just heard that. You could even be online. Somebody has to sow a seed for financial recovery. I don't know who you are, but there's somebody in this auditorium, somebody online that needs to sow seed for financial recovery. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say this chains will never break. Masaka. My name is Saga. I they don't know you like wind, God of recovery. For there is power in you. Listen, we're going to sing that again. There is somebody online and somebody in this auditorium. You need to succeed for your financial recovery. saying that there is somebody to whom that is an instruction. And you're going to do it. And you're going to show the amount God puts on your heart. As the choir sings this song, the axe head will float. It will float in your life. Lost opportunities will come back. Some of you the money you lost, the restoration is coming in an opportunity God is giving you that will pay you much more. That will pay you much. Not another contract, but its payment will be multiple and God says that's your recovery. Do you understand? It's like losing a child and then you get another child and that child and then becomes a king or a president and he does for you what five children could not do. So some of you, recovery is coming in that form. That the door God is opening. He's just going to have so many other things attached to it. But let the sower pay attention. There's somebody who's supposed to sow seed. Hold your money in your hands. Those of you that are tithers. Recovery, Father. I release recovery in every area of the children's lives. Recovery of health. Recovery of relationships. Recovery of divine appointments. Divine relationships and connections. Some of you people that left you before they were done in your life are going to look for you again. Because they were not done. They were not done with the work God sent them to do in your life. They were not finished. In the name of Jesus. The delayed promotions, when it comes, it will go three steps above. In the name of Jesus. You see, God is giving more recovery than you can receive. They say this mountain can't be moved. Go ahead and give. They say it's changed. Go ahead and give. You dear ones online.
Doesn't matter what the Amalekite says Doesn't matter what it looks like Lord we believe, Lord we believe Lord we believe, Lord we believe Doesn't matter what the naysayers say She will never recover, she will never come She will never return Lord we believe doesn't matter what they say about this church They are not God Abba you are God Lord we believe we say Lord we believe God Your business, your family, your finances, your calling Your dreams, your anointing Everything God has said to you Lord we believe, Lord we believe Lord we believe Ask your neighbor, do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe your hair will grow back? Do you believe your hair will grow back? Oh, girl, do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? You travel to the nations. Do you believe? You're the blessing to your family. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Oh, do you believe? Do you believe? The answer to the cry of your clan. Do you believe we are the answer to the world? Agape! Oh, do you believe? Do you believe we carry answers for our generation? Young people, do you believe you carry answers for our Do you believe our generation will come up? Lord, we believe. Do you believe one day you'll play in Wembley? Wembley, keyboard in Wembley, Mega Crusade. Somebody believe for this. Let's say, Lord, we believe. This one will be lawyering. I don't know if he believes to play the king, the guitar in the biggest stadium in the Arab world. But help and believe for him, this lawyer. Lord, we believe. I don't know where Robert is going. Over Ronnie and Abba Kuba Kiki say Kampala. Ono to Miami the color to believe for him. Lord, we believe. Stretch out your hands to Father, thank you. Lord, thank you. My wife is going to preach in the revival meetings. Power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we believe. And all the children of this house that went crazy, running, 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 riot. Under that demon of deception, they are coming back. Lord, we believe. They are no poor, no barren, no losers, no abortion, no miscarriages in this house. None, 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 none. Lord, we believe. For some people, giving is an anointing. Until you bring me a billion shillings, you'll never be at rest. Can we believe for little Lily? Lord, we believe Until the prophecies of the commanders Everything they've spoken Where are the commanders in this house? All the crazy things these children spoke Lord, Lord we believe Every prophetic word given to this ministry We recover every chapter Every verse, every word Everything that has been spoken to us Lord, we believe yourself in everything I've said. And you say, Lord, we believe. We believe Give the Lord praise in this house. Woo. The barren womb will have three triplets. Lord, we believe. One child, okay. I agree with you. One pregnancy, but three children. Lord, we believe for it. And some of you are in the choir. 
glory to God. <laughs> Look at Kathy. Papa. Five children. My figure. Kali. Three at a go. Lord, we believe for it. Some of you think we're just playing games. We believe for it. This choir will stand on big stadiums of the world, mega stadiums of the world, platforms, huge platforms. I believe for you. Hallelujah. What time is it? Are my online people still there? Online, I love you. Very quick announcement before I let you go. So how beautiful does that song rhyme with our message today? Our cell ministry is opening very soon, 22nd of February. I want to read you and I want us to appreciate in a coming service I'll call them forth. But I want us to appreciate these dear people that have opened their homes for their homes for cell hosting and cell leaders, cell leadership. I'm quickly going to read their names because I want to let you go. Um, Pastor and Mrs. Nsubuga, Pastor Titus and Mrs. Nsubuga are doing a wonderful job. From what you sent me, the last information you had given me, we had 12 cells. They have gone to 16, 17. Beautiful. We've grown. So, listen to your locations and begin to prepare to attend cells in these places. Number one, we have a cell. Location in Nansa and Eswamala. And the cell leader and cell host is Pastor Rona. <laughs> Nansa and Eswamala. Cell number two. We have a cell host, Dr. and Mrs. Sechanzi. And... The location is Busega. Busega. The host, Dr. and Mrs. Sechanzi. And the cell leader, Minister Derek Sewanyana. So because we say it, some places, the cell host may be the cell leader, if they can. But in some places, people are opening up their homes to say, the cell can meet here. That becomes the cell host. But the leader can be coming from outside that home. So this is what we have with the Dr. Mr. and Mrs. Sechanzi, they opened their home for sale in Busega, and the cell leader is Minister Derek Sewanyana. So, people in Busega, get ready to go to that wonderful home. Cell number three. Again, we have a cell host, Miss Susan Nachimuli, and the cell leader, Minister Trishila Nanyonjo. This cell is in Tinda. So is that your mom giving us her home and she's here today? So, how interesting. The mother is the host, the daughter is the leader. Kale. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so that's a cell in Tinder. We have a cell in Budo. The cell host and the cell leader is Minister Wilson Kasalire. <laughs> Budo! Budo, we are coming. So if you come from Budo, then we have a cell in Kawempe, cell number five. The cell host and the cell leader is Minister Chandia Lucky. I asked him who gave you the name Lucky. He said, my parents. I said, because your parents didn't know Jesus. They called you Lucky. I called you blessed. So I said, I called him Chandia Lucky, blessed. Kagwisa. 
Praise God. Cell number six, that's Kawempe, people of Kawempe or in the neighborhoods. Cell number six is in Mengo, the cell host and the cell leader. <laughs> Minister Solomon Liazi. Where is he? Obezo premises is a host. Ovaliko premises is an. There's a politics there that I didn't. Pastor Titus, whose premises are those? <laughs> so Minister Solomon has premises in Mengo. He's a cell host and a cell leader. Mengo. So that must be the old cathedral. There'll be a cell at the old cathedral. Cell number seven is in Nabulagala Bulangi. It's a combination of Nabulagala Connect in the middle there, Nabulagala and Bulangi, led by none other than uh, Minister Justin Cavallo our missions coordinator. She's the cell host and cell leader. Cell number eight is in Namungona, Luinja, led and hosted. It's hosted and led by uh, Miss Edith Masane. That's Namungona. Not a very common face, but uh, Pastor and Mrs. Uh, Soboga will be telling you how to find to locate these people but just know Namungona you have a location uh, and then we have a location in Lunguja a cell in Lunguja hosted and led by Minister Jennifer Nakachwa that's she's host and leader beautiful Lunguja people we are coming and then we have a cell location in Munyonyo led and hosted She's the cell host and leader, Minister Aine Caroline Nalongo. That's in Munyonyo. Munyonyo Muchigaga. So, Munyonyo people, Salama neighborhoods, you have a cell that area. This is a beautiful distribution of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we also have a cell in Lubia. Names are not complete. Well, to the child, they are complete. Now, me, I felt they are not complete. Minister Caroline Kaguisa. So I miss a name there because we have many Kaguisas and we have many Carolines. So I wrote to you a message and I think you didn't open my message. I will say I, want, I wanted the, the maiden name of this Kaguisa. I didn't see it. Which Caroline is this? Nakamanda. Okay. Asha. Lubia, wow. Lubia. So Lubia, we are covered. No, no, wait. Let me give you a detail on this one. This cell is hosted. Mrs. Senyonjo, are you sure? This is no. This is cell host and leader. So this is Caroline Nakamwanda in Lubia. You all know Caroline. She's famous. Praise God. And then we have uh, cell number 12 by Pastor Mark and his wife. Cell host and leaders. And location is Lunguja. So Lunguja has so far two cells. Wow. One by Minister Jennifer and one by Deacon Mark and his dear wife. So look out Lunguja people. And then we have Lubia again. We have a cell host, Mrs. Florence Senyonjo. That's Irene and uh, Barbara's home. And the cell leader is Nagai Hanifa. Nagai Hanifa. So how do you daughters of Florence Senyonjo, the host, miss being the leaders? But Hanifa saved the day. So your mother opened up her home. God bless. So we have a quick multiplication there. Then we have a cell in Kosovo. That is still Lunguja, right? The cell host is Mama Merab. Mama Merab, thank you. Where is she? Is she here? Mama Merab didn't come today. We have a cell in her home. And the cell leader is Ronald Nsivambi. <laughs> Special Forces agent. And then we have a cell host and cell leader in Wakiso. Led by none other than Mutabanuwa Kaguisa, Henry Scott, Sempa, Mkubi, the boy of many names. 
Oh, he's the one on camera right here. So, this is in Wakiso. We have a, is this the first one in Wakiso? And then we have... So, Wakiso and Nansen I will be sharing. And then we have a cell in Nalumunye. Hosted by Mrs. Adela Serongoma. And led by Julius Asimwe. I looked on this and I said, wow, Julius lives in uh, Ntinda right now. Nalumunye is across. I said, this boy is brave. Chai. Where's Julius? How are you going to do that? Miracles. You said it, we believe it. From Ntinda to go to Nalumunye to lead a cell and fly back to Ntinda. I believe in miracles. It's beautiful. God bless you, Julius. And then we have a cell location in Nigeria 1. Nigeria 1. Hosted by Pastor and Mrs. in Subuga. You couldn't survive that one. And led by Minister Jab Judah Tadeo Mubiru. This guy, you had to host a sale in a pastor's home. Because there, there is no suffering. Plenty of bread and popcorn and pancakes. And plenty of work. Okay. So Judah is leading the sale at Pastor Subuga's home. And, but Pastor T, don't we have a sale at Fortress? Still under discussion, eh? Yes. So it turns out we have 17 sales. How amazing for starters. And there's a special arrangement. Mr. and Mrs. Balgahari are planning a love sale for children. Special cell for children. And, a, and a cooking, and a making. You want to be the cell leader for children? Open yours. They will be leading theirs. So that one is coming, a unique one. Now, we have also a cell leader awaiting a cell host, cell location. Minister Namotevi Peace is a cell leader in waiting. So you open a home, and we have a wonderful Holy Ghost filled lady to lead. She's a leader, but without a location. So if you open your home, Minister Peace, where are you? I want to market you. Because we want a home opened. Where are you? Where is Minister Peace? Hey! She's ushering. Where is she? Is she hiding or she's outside? Peace Namatev is ushering outside, eh? Or she's under the power. She's hiding. Why is she hiding? Kalete wana. Njaka kuba. She doesn't want to come near me. These days the children run from me. I don't know what my fault is. They never want to find me in the corridors because they think they might not wake up. Peace, Namatebi. Then we have Andrew Wamono waiting as what? As a host or a leader? As a leader also. So we have two leaders waiting. Andrew, where is Andrew? Andrew is right here, a cell leader in waiting, and Namutevi Peace, a cell leader in waiting. So we are waiting for two homes to open to accommodate those ones. But right now we have 17 cells waiting to kick off. I'll be bringing a message. Can we clap our hands to God for the people that have opened their homes? I'll be bringing a message or messages to prepare us for these cells. But right now we had to plow our hearts for the word of the year. I want to let you go. Now, as we go, this hall had a, they had a problem, a fire problem, I was told. So we didn't use our entrance, this side. It was parked by the road. They are waiting for you to remove the car. Has the time expired? The time has expired. The parking tickets we paid. I thought multiplex is free on Sunday. Okay. Uh, so if you parked a car on the street, don't take too long to pick it up. Uh, there are certain logistical issues probably or staffing issues that require you to remove that car quickly. 
Disan kati okoye chi. We must stand up we say the grace. Na longo wa basatu still under the power. This anointing is real. Okay, who else wants triplets and twins? All of you want twins and triplets. Lift up your hands. All right. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release the anointing for twins and triplets. Another one has received. Nalongo opera. Nenalongo brenda babidiye. Ah, take. Take. Basalongo we now receive your anointing. Receive your anointing. The shorter we spend in the labor words, the better we have the gospel to preach. So receive your twins, receive your triplets in Jesus' name. And don't worry about money. Money is not a problem. The giver of twins knows how to provide. In Jesus' name, say amen. But receiving this church is full of the brave. They don't fear twins and triplets. Hallelujah. Lillian, were you one of them? Were you one, were you one of them? And your twins, a boy and a girl. Boy and a girl. On the first go. Praise God. The grace of our Lord Jesus. Now, as we go out, now, this is what we are doing. The locations where we read the cells. The papers are out there. You need to register according to your location. So register for Lubia, register for Lunguja, are the, are the papers labeled? So on your way out, you register so that the cell hosts begin to plan for you. And the cell leaders begin to plan. For, so the papers are labeled the locations. So Lubia is labeled, Nansa, Nawakiso, whatever labeled. So you look for the label and you register your name and phone number there so we begin to plan for you. And so that if a cell, for instance, a particular cell is oversubscribed, we have to find a quick solution because the home may not contain you. So register now on your way out according to your location. The papers are there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the worship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and the joy of the twin mothers be with us all and triplet mothers now and forevermore. Amen. Which song are we singing as we go? Wonder working God. Wonder working God. Let's go. Even those of you who like this.
remove our song from our lives. Vamos a sola. Vamos con la casa. 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 Vamos con la casa.